Welcome to the Elijah Rising podcast. Elijah Rising is an organization empowering women recovering from sexual exploitation. This episode is going to help you become more aware about the issue of sex trafficking and inspire you to take action. Welcome back to the Elijah Rising Podcast. I'm your host, Micah Gamboa. And today I'm joined by a very special guest. We have Frankie Mazapika with us. You may remember him from a few episodes back where he shared about his previous book. Today we're going to talk about your second book, which is really exciting. How about before we do that, you introduce yourself to our listeners? All right. Well, um, a pastor of church in the Woodlands, Texas. It's called Celebration Church. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I love my wife. I've got three kids. I've got two dogs that annoy me. <laughs> um, and uh, I've known you guys now for about five years. Yeah, it's incredible time. I know, flies. I know. I, I can't believe in, yeah, I remember when your baby was like six months yeah. old, three months mm-hmm. old. And and I remember when I, I when I met you guys, um, I was sitting in my kitchen. This is what led to our discussion or led to me calling you guys mm-hmm. to meet you guys. Mm-hmm. I was in my kitchen. I was having lunch and my laptop was open mm-hmm. and my splash page. Is that what you call it? When yeah, sure. The, the, sounds good. It's the first, yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> so when I open up and I get online, yeah. um, Fox News pops up. And so um, right on the, like, I didn't even have to scroll down. It says, Elijah Rising (laughs) stops Canadian company from coming to Houston Mm -hmm. to open up a, uh, what was it, a robot sex brothel? Yeah, which is perfect timing that we're doing this episode because (laughs) our previous episodes, we actually revisit that. It's our five-year anniversary. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) And so we had to re-explain, like, I'm sorry, what? (laughs) What are we talking about? Exactly. (laughs) Like, when I read it, I'm sitting there eating lunch at the counter in my kitchen, and I read that, and I'm like, what Um, in the world? yes. And so I'm looking at it, and I didn't know anything about Elijah mm-hmm. Rising. And so I'm looking at Elijah Rising, like the link where I could click on the link. And just the title of the article was alarming, <laughs> but I was so curious sure. because I've never heard of sure. anything like that in my life. And so like my hand kind of hovered over the mouse because I don't know where this is going to take me, you know? So I click on Elijah Rising and um, um, at first I read the article Mm -hmm. and I'm like, how in the world Mm -hmm. did you guys stop this? Mm -hmm. Like it got the White House's attention. Mm -hmm. Um, It was insane. Like I've never heard, and then I click on it, and I had a, an idea. I was like, maybe they're Christian because mm. Elijah rising, sure. and so then I start reading about you guys, and I'm like, these people are in Houston. They're at the tip of the spear mm-hmm. uh, on stopping sex trafficking, mm. and then like regularly, you guys are going into brothels mm-hmm. trying to get um, these victims mm-hmm. freed. And so that's when I called you guys up. I was like, okay, I got to meet you guys. And I had one primary motivation to bring you guys to our church Mm. and just raise as much money as we could and give it to you guys. And we've been partners um, for five years now, you know? And so it's been an awesome, awesome partnership. Like our, our church family loves loves like they get excited about (laughs) the opportunities to give i mean it's been a fun relationship it really has and from our end as well i mean we've really enjoyed not just getting to know you frankie but also your team your attendees you know they've really rallied around not just elijah rising but that 
kind of anti-trafficking focus as a whole. Yeah. Um, but there are other focuses that your church really carries, embodies, that I would say you lead the way in um, that are so important, not just for the Christian community at large, but for anti-trafficking specifically. And your previous book was kind of all centered around the power of God. Right. Do you want to just touch on that real quick? Yes. Uh, the title was Your Divine Invitation. Um access the Holy Spirit to complete your assignment. And, you know, that book will always be dear to my heart mm. um, because that was, I basically write about the the journey that I took um, to go from just praying and hoping that people would be healed mm-hmm. to actually seeing people healed. Yeah. Wow. And and so now um when I pray for people to get healed at our church, people get healed every single Sunday. Yeah. Now, not everyone we pray for gets healed, mm-hmm. but it is not uncommon um for deaf ears to open, blind eyes to open. Our prayer partners experience the exact same thing. Mm. And so um in that book, I just walk people through a very practical journey. Because mm. I used to look at these ministers or even people who are just in a in the congregation, and I've always looked at them and I thought, You're picked right? You're picked to pray for people Mm. and see miracles and see healings. Mm. I didn't realize that you could volunteer for that. Wow. Yeah, that's such a good way to put it. Right. I didn't realize that you could do that. (laughs) And so um, I just said, okay, God, use me as an example Mm -hmm. of a person who's not seeing any of these things happen. Mm -hmm. And, And then now... I'm seeing them happen so I could tell other people about it. You know, use me as an example. And that that very thing happened. And Mm -hmm. that's why I wrote the book. Um, Because, again, I would say, just tell me exactly what to do, God. Like, give me the one, two, three steps, even if there's 42 steps. Like, I'll take each step serious. But nobody ever told me what they were. And so I kind of had to discover that on my own. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's so duplicatable. Mm. You know, because it's all scriptural. I love that. Yeah, it was it was um, it was a fun book to write. Yeah, and the first one. Now you've written a second, right? Which we're here to unpack a little bit. And I'm really excited to host you today because you know we have such a common common thread, common theme. Kind of, I don't know. Our backgrounds are the same. Um, Meaning that, so your next book is called Ignite Your Life. Right. 14 Things That Happen When You Pray. And so it's all centered around this theme that of prayer being integral to the Christian walk and developing your, your life in Christ and what happens when you do that. So do you want to introduce our listeners to that kind of second? I do, I do. So when um, the journey began in 2018, when I wrote the first book. Mm -hmm. And and what I started realizing is while I was praying, saying, okay, God, make me an example of a person who's not experiencing any healings or miracles. Mm -hmm. I started noticing that as I was praying, other things started happening that Mm. were phenomenal. Mm. And um, and so then I started praying, you know, I start, I'd set my alarm on my phone. Like, I'm not coming out of this prayer room until, which was usually my bedroom or a room at the office. Yeah. I'm not coming out until the alarm goes off. Mm-hmm. And it, it started off at, at 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't like talking about it because it's so personal to me. But just to make my point, you know, it's very easy for me to pray two hours now. Mm. And it just kind of worked up 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. But I started seeing all these other things happen. Mm. And um, and then I realized, oh my goodness, like, for example, in, in the book, I talk about 14 things that happen when you pray. But um, one of them is battles that we're facing, mm-hmm. they are won or lost depending on whether or not we're praying. Mm. Um, in Psalms 56, 9, it says, every day you call for help, the tide of the battle turns. And so to back up and say, okay, I'm in the middle of a battle. Yeah. And if I pray, I'll win. Amen. If yeah. I don't, I won't. Yeah. You know, it's that simple because... 
uh, let me think, what's that scripture? 2 Corinthians 10, 9, where it mm-hmm. says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Mm-hmm. You know, so carnal means anything that you can do on your own. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. Mm-hmm. So it, battles are won or lost depending on whether or not we pray. And yeah. and that's, yeah, I think that's the first, um, the first or second chapter. Mm-hmm. But then I came across another verse, and, and this is another chapter, um, where I realized that seasons shift when we pray. Yeah. And so for me, I've been in so many seasons where I'm like, God, I'm tired of being in this spot. Sure. Like, I want, I want to be closer to you. Mm-hmm. And I realize I'm always going to have problems while I'm on earth, but I want different problems, <laughs> right? Like these pro- I'm done. I'm done with this. Yeah. And in Daniel 2, 21, it says um, such a, it's, it's such a, it was such a uh, breath of fresh air for me because it says, and God changes the times and the seasons. Mm-hmm. I mean, he obviously that includes, um, I don't know. Um, winter, spring, summer, fall. I mean, obviously it includes that, Mm -hmm. but it means much more than that. Mm -hmm. It's He's saying, I changed the seasons. In other words, he looks at us and says, okay, you've been in this season long enough. Mm -hmm. And every season we have prepares us for the next season. Mm -hmm. And you're ready now. Yeah. You're equipped. You're ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go to the next season. Mm-hmm. And but these shifts of seasons, um, they come through prayer. So mm-hmm. if you're not praying, you can get stuck in a season way longer than yeah. what you should be. Mm. You know, um, the the story about the children of Israel wandering around in the wilderness mm-hmm. for 40 years. You know, the examples go on and on. Mm-hmm. But for those who pray, the seasons change. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll just share one more just for the sake of time. But when you pray you're able to impact the lives of those who are not even praying for themselves. So you know, good. and so when you have a friend, you have a loved one and and they just seem to be in a rough patch or off the rails so to speak. Yeah. And you're like, "Oh god, like they're not even acknowledging you. I don't even know if they have help or hope because if you're not in their life, they're I know they have no hope." Mm-hmm. But in um, in Mark chapter nine, this father brought his son who was possessed with the devil, mm-hmm. and he asked Jesus for help. Yeah, you know, and yeah. and so essentially he was praying. Mm-hmm. He came to the Lord. He prayed. Yeah, and uh, we know the end of the story where the young boy was delivered. Mm-hmm. Well, the boy didn't come to Jesus. The boy didn't talk to the boy. Yeah. Didn't ask for help. It was the father who did. Mm. And the Lord honored his prayers. Uh, Another example, Lazarus was dead. Right. He could (laughs) could not not. ask, right? He he was dead. Uh, Dead people can't pray. He's wrapped up in a tomb. Mm -hmm. It was Mary and Martha that came to Mm -hmm. Jesus and, and, and put their request at his feet and, and prayed. Yeah. And consequently, Lazarus came back to life. Mm-hmm. And so you take these stories and, and you look at a mother and you say, hey, if you have a son or a daughter that you're, is just breaking your heart, mm-hmm. your prayers are so powerful that it can impact their life. Mm-hmm. And Paul was in prison and um, he was he was cold. He had no coat. He talks about that. Um, he was He was essentially down and depressed. Mm-hmm. And in First Corinthians, no, 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 it's not First Corinthians. Let me think. Yeah, it was First Second Corinthians one eleven. He says this. He goes, "You helped me when you prayed for me." Mm. Yeah. Right. And so, uh, why did he need help? He was he was in the prison. He was stuck. He couldn't. Yeah. He was. He he's his hope was being drained. Yeah. And so. At some point, and I like to kind of dive into that, like, uh, when did he know he was getting help? He could feel strengthened. Yeah, his spirit was more buoyant, if exactly. you will. Exactly. Yeah. He just started noticing, wait a minute here, 
I'm not as down as yeah. I, I'm not as depressed. I'm I'm not as weak. I feel like I'm getting stronger. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, well, how could this? Oh, you guys are praying for mm-hmm. me, you know? And so I just believe that if people know exactly what's happening while they're praying, sure. that knowing doing gap will mm-hmm. be closed, right? They know they need to. Sure. But we all are like, yes, we understand that prayer is important. I, I know I need to, yeah. but yeah. to actually do it, right. it's very it's very difficult. Yeah. But when you know what's happening, mm-hmm. okay, now there's some, there's some fire in the prayers. Yeah, I love that. So we... I say we're similar in that way because we so value prayer. We keep it as one of our four pillars. So Elijah Rising started as a prayer meeting, and that was all we did for like a year, probably more. Um, and so we tried to keep that as part of the foundation, but there's always more. Yeah. You know, you're you're never like, oh, well, I've arrived at the prayer summit. You know, right, <laughs> I right, am exactly. now a superior prayer person. <laughs> like, there's no such thing as that. No, because Paul, I think it's Paul. He's like, you need to be praying continually. Yes, like there's never an end. It's always a constant communication back and forth. And there's another book that I reference sometimes, but it, he talks about it just being like this communion with the Lord. Like yeah. it's not like. There are times when we go into our room and we shut the door and we do it in private and it's, you know, focused, intense, intentional. But then there's other times where you're like, hey, this is a breath prayer. I'm in my car. Like I'm constantly communing with the Father. Yeah. What did you just say uh, in my car? Is like, like a breath prayer. They talk about I like, I love I'm just... that phrase. Like a breath prayer. Um... Like God help me, you yeah. know, or whatever. Like you, but you are acknowledging it takes a form of, a measure of humility yeah. to, to say like, man, God, I need you. I can't do it on my own. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's funny you would say that because Smith Wigglesworth said, short prayers are powerful prayers. Mm. Amen. I love that. Isn't that great? <laughs> and he's like the king of prayer. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. That's short amazing. prayers are powerful wow. prayers, you know, and some people say, I well, that. I can't pray very long. Can you say a sentence? Yeah. Because that sentence is really, really powerful. Yeah. And I think, I think... To to your point, just start. Yeah. Right. You start with ten minutes a day, and through the faithfulness, the diligence, the discipline, the perseverance, like it's like a muscle. Yeah. You grew it. Yes. And it's again, it's not like a performance. It's not like a I'm earning God's favor. You're just communing with the Father. There's another woman who I love. She lists. She says. To pray is to just open yourself up to right. the holy. You know, right. if we think of it in that way of like we're just opening ourselves up to the Holy Spirit, to the Father, and letting Him do the work. Yes, you know. Yes, I was talking to somebody recently, and they said, "I just don't know what to say." Yeah, right. I don't know what to do, and sure. I said, "You know what." God knew that we would struggle there, mm-hmm. right? And so He made it crystal clear what to do when when we're trying to pray, when mm-hmm. we're in there. And um, it's in Philippians 4, 6, where he says, pray about everything and then thank him for everything he's done. Mm. And so when we're praying, it's that continual cycle mm-hmm. where you're praying about every worry, every concern, yeah. everything you need, right? The people that say, I don't want to pray because I'm always asking for things. He's asking, like, if it's on your mind, yeah. pray about everything. And the cool thing about that word, everything, is it means everything. Yeah. <laughs> right? He cares about every detail of right. our lives. That's right. What the Bible and he wants says. to be a part of it. Yeah. And so there's this there's this cycle. Mm-hmm. You pray about everything, and then you praise him for what he's done. So good. You pray about everything. You praise him for what he's done. So good. And your entire prayer time is just over that. And, mm-hmm. and praising him for what he's done, I mean... I've been walking around in my house and saying, God, thank you for this carpet. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I've been in homes, if you want to call them that, in the barrios in different countries, and it's all dirt. Yeah. Right. Pray for the simplest things. Mm -hmm. And and as you pray for simple things, more things will come to your mind. I love that. You know, thank you that I'm not in the hospital right now. Yeah. Thank you that my children aren't in the hospital. Thank Mm -hmm. you that I'm still married. Mm -hmm. Right. (laughs) Um, or or whatever, right. you know, whatever comes to your mind. So you praise, and then 
you pray about whatever's on your mind. It's good. You praise and you just go back and forth, back and forth, back it's really and forth. Good. And it's so important, I would say, we see such a performance culture. I mean, we're in America, for goodness sake. You right. know, it's so ingrained into everything, hyper-productivity, performance. Um, it's this drivenness of the world, really, the world, the flesh, and the devil, that like right. push it. It's, it's constantly pushing. So you're feeling this pressure, and the only way to really relieve that pressure is to surrender to the Father. Right. You know, And the only way you can do that is to cast all of your cares on the only one, the only burden bearer, yeah. which is Jesus. Yeah. And it says, like, he daily bears our burdens. Yes. And so in this, I mean, I know it's the same as a pastor you have, you're carrying so much with the cares of your church, your family, the finances of everything, trying to yeah. keep all the yes. wheels spinning. Yes. And we feel the same thing, you know, in anti-trafficking, yes. you feel a lot of pressure to see these women recover and healed and reached. You always want to do more. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, but the only solution, the only one who is able to carry that amount of pressure is yes. Christ. Well, if the problem is too big for you, it's, it's, you're not the one that's supposed to solve it. Yeah. Right? And so uh, when, when you and your team are looking at victims that are being abused on it, I mean, it's the modern day slavery. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we knew the life that they're living, I mean, I think all of us would just quit our jobs and just join Elijah Rising, right? <laughs> but there's a part of us, and I, I'm just speaking for myself, I know that it would just ruin my my life to know. And so it's kind of like, thank you, Elijah Rising, mm. because I can support you guys in what you're doing. I can pray and um, and know that you guys are the tip of the spear. And um, for those of us who partner when we're in heaven, we'll get to reap the same reward as you, Absolutely. you know, yeah. um, you know, we need you and you need us. And Absolutely. so, you know, and, um, but then further, you know, I, I like to say everyone has tremendous burdens. Yes. Even though they look different. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Um, for one person, they're just praying to God they stay out of the hospital. My wife has said it before because she got really, really sick for about nine months. She couldn't get out of the bed. Hmm. And she said, if you have your health, you have an awesome life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I know you can talk about that totally. too. Yeah. And so, you know, all of our burdens are different, mm-hmm. but they're equally as heavy. Yeah. Oh, no. Totally agree. You know. You know and, and we've and been... to get out of that, how, how, how are you going to get out of that? If you yeah. could change it, you would. Yeah. Right? Right. And so um, to say, okay, like when I pray, the tide of my battle turns. Yeah. I and mean, it's a powerful thing. We as believers have the authority. It doesn't necessarily mean that, okay, we prayed once and it's automatically going to be fixed. Sometimes, yes, right? right? right. That does happen. Right. But we also see persevering prayer, travailing prayer, um, fervent, you know, effective prayer of the righteous in the scriptures. And we see men and women who throughout history prayed for days, weeks, months, years to see something accomplished yeah. because there's a struggle in the heavenlies, right? That we are interacting there's a with. Battle there's there. a battle Yeah, yeah. I love talking with you, Micah, because you're as passionate about prayer as anyone I've ever met. But, uh, and I know we got to stay, concentrate on the time, but I really got to say this, you know, sometimes our battle shifts uh, and, and the whole season changes um, in a, in a second. Yeah, I, I can't even count how many people I've seen healed in a moment. Mm-hmm. But to your point, sometimes the seas, even though the battle is shifting, um, it needs to shift moment by moment, day by day, before that victory comes. Yeah. But there's there's two things you get every single time you pray hmm. immediately. And it's in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. It says, when you pray, let's go to the throne of grace 
mm. with boldness because when you pray, you will always receive mm. mercy and grace. So good. Every single time. So good. And so mercy says, hey, look, uh, I remember that you're made from dust. Yeah. And I'm not... I'm not. I'm not looking at you with angry eyes. I'm looking at you with loving eyes. Mm. My my mercy, my love endures forever. So you receive mercy every time, mm. and then you receive grace every single time. And and what grace does is it makes you strong where you're weak, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you get that every single time. And so if the battle shifts. In uh, well, the battle is always shifting every time you pray, but if the battle lasts Mm -hmm. a while, yeah, you always have the grace to get through that. Mm -hmm. But if you're not praying, no grace, good luck, lower your expectations, you might be there a while, yeah. Yeah, and it might crush you in the process. Yes. You know? Yes. We, I know we could share so many stories about just the practicality of what that looks like. Yes. Um, can you share with our listeners maybe one testimony where you've seen, hey, this has been a lesson that you maybe you put in the book or something throughout your life of the power or the efficacy where prayer made a difference and you know for a fact, like, if I didn't pray, that wouldn't have happened. Yes. Yes. I'll use a, a personal one. Um, my wife, for whatever reason, um, help me with this. I can't believe I'm drawing a blank here. Vertigo, Mm. vertigo. Mm -hmm. She was having vertigo like crazy. And for people who've had vertigo, um, you know, it's debilitating. Yeah. And going to a doctor, it's like, you know, they're grasping for straws. Try this, try that. But she was in bed for months, mm-hmm. you know, should hold the wall to get to the kitchen. I mean, it was terrible. Uh, mm-hmm. It got to the point where our kids weren't even expecting her to be standing up when they got home from school. You know, I'm dropping mm-hmm. them off from school. I'm picking them up. For mm-hmm. Like, it was just terrible. And then um, I remember walking into my office, and in Psalms 5.3, it says, every morning I wake up. I'm going to lay the pieces of my life on the altar Mm -hmm. and I'm going to wait for the fire to fall. Hmm. And so I would go into my office and I would close my eyes and I would say, I'm coming to your throne right now. And I would visualize to the best of my ability, um, being at his throne Mm -hmm. and coming before my king. And I would say, sometimes you're my father, sometimes you're my savior, but right now I need you to be my king. And I'm coming before you and I'm asking you to heal my wife. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you. And I did that over and over again. No doctors, they they had no answers, you know. Um, They had no medication, you know. It's not like that he can, she can go on a Garden of Eden fast, like nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I just came home one day and she was up. She was walking around and she got stronger and stronger. And I know that had I not prayed, That would not have happened. Yeah. That would not have happened. And so, you know, in the book, I I cite a lot of different examples. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just know, I know in my heart because it's happened to me, Mm -hmm. um, that when you know the 14 things, and there's more, but... Uh, you know, my, my hand was was uh, cramping while I was writing, <laughs> so to speak. You know, but um, when you know what's happening, mm-hmm. uh, you just pray more. Mm-hmm. And to title to go back to the title of the book, it it really does ignite your life. Mm-hmm. I love that, and we need it. And in anti trafficking, right? We need the power of God, the grace of God. We need to be sustained. We need hope, like. There are survivors who speak out now who are leaders who have come out and they're like, you know, therapy, community, all of those things I needed. But really, the most effective transformational moments have been with my times with Jesus. Yes. He is the healer. He is a restorer. And so we as believers, whether you're in anti-trafficking or not, right, you're right, still working right. with humanity who is broken. We are right. all so in need, right? right? And so we need that that infusion of grace and mercy like you're talking about. And yes. if it's as simple as like, 
okay, let's figure out how to pray, you yeah. know? <laughs> like, And see, that's what I love. Uh, I love every facet of uh, Elijah Rising, but when you guys rescue a young lady, I mean, within that same day, you guys are introduce, introducing Jesus mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. same day. Mm-hmm. And, and you recognize that, okay, they have been through things that are so bad, they may never even tell us. Yeah, right. And for them to be healed mm-hmm. and made whole, that's not something that can happen any other way. Yeah. Then then calling on the Lord. So you guys start praying for these these girls immediately. Mm-hmm. And um and that's why you guys are seeing the fruit that you're that you're seeing in this ministry. Um I mean it's powerful. It truly, truly is. And let there be more. We right. need the church to arise. Right. <laughs> right? right. We We're, need intercessors. You know, um <laughs> the church is the hope of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And we get a lot of questions like, well, why is Houston so bad about trafficking? I'm like, well, Mm -hmm. honestly, it's a heart of man issue, humanity issue, right? Right. right. If the, and I really believe that if the church putting myself in this bucket, you know, if we were taking our place on the wall of intercession, crying out for the Lord's like power, revival, repentance, transformation to come yes. at, collectively, Yes, I think we would be in a very different position. Oh my goodness. We, you know, our power is reliant on our prayer life. Mm. And so would we be in a different position? Absolutely. Yeah. Because our victories would be more often Yeah, and um, they'd be more powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. So let's, one more takeaway that you want our listeners to have before we, we wrap up. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you really feel like, man, this is really important. I want them to know. You know, I, th- I think that, um, the last thing that I would want to say is, and this is one of the chapters in the book too, that prayer changes the trajectory of your life. You know, I I had a birthday mm. a few years ago, and I thought to myself, if I extrapolate, extrapolate, how many say that? Yeah, word? extrapolate. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I speak for a living, but you know, I, can't, <laughs> <laughs> I can't say words. But anyway, um, I started thinking if if my life stays at the same pace mm-hmm. as it is right now, yeah, fifteen years from now, I'm going to see moderate changes. You know, incremental change. That's a better word. Incremental changes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, am I going to be happy, you know, at that point? And, you know, it was very depressing. <laughs> it was very, very depressing. Mm. And um, and so I said, I need my trajectory to change. Mm, I, I need it to be higher. I need it to be sharper. Um, and what I mean by that is... The, the closeness that I have with the Lord has got to be, mm-hmm. it's, it's got to be closer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I want my, um, my impact when I talk with people. Uh, and, and Charles Finn, and I, I talk about him in the book, mm-hmm. how just someone's countenance, just the, the, the light in their eyes can cause someone to feel convicted of their sin. Um, and so this can happen with anyone. And mm-hmm. so I really started praying and um, I started noticing new doors opening, you know, new relationships. When, when God opens up doors for you, it's not because we display this tremendous amount of strength. Mm-hmm. In uh, Revelation 3, 8, he says, see, I have opened up a door for you. And then watch this. I know you are very weak, <laughs> right? And it's just like, oh my goodness, thank you, because I don't want to feel like I got to hide the obvious. I know you are very weak, mm-hmm. but you've remained faithful to mm-hmm. me. And so when he opens up a door, the door is not a physical door. It's new opportunities. Mm-hmm. It's new relationships. Mm-hmm. It's a greater responsibility. It's more influence. And so that changes your trajectory immediately. Yeah. And all of that circles back around to being faithful. You can't be faithful if you're not praying. Yeah. And so I know so I know that you're weak. Mm-hmm. 
But you've remained faithful. Mm-hmm. You, you've continued to put your mind's attention, your heart's affection on me, and say those one sentence prayers. <laughs> so watch what I'm about to do. I'm going to change your trajectory. I'm going to open up doors for you. That's so good. I love the teaser. So where can people find your book? Well, you can buy it anywhere books are sold right okay. now. Okay. Yeah, just, you know, you can get it on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or, or whatever. That's a, and it's out now, so people can go right well, now. Well, right and get now it? you can pre order it. Okay. So you're the first per, <laughs> you'll be the first person to get it. When does it release? It releases in January. Perfect. January but, 2024. Um, I have a feeling it, you know, um, yeah, it, it, and you can start your day, your, your off with it. You know, there's a reason why I aimed for 14 things mm. because if you read one chapter a day, the first two weeks of the new year, mm-hmm. you can launch the entire year um, with establishing the first two weeks of your year. That's so good. Um, knowing exactly what happens when you pray. That's so good. Yeah. I love that. So January 2024, in case people are listening That's at another right. time. That's right. Amazon. That's right. And it's called? Ignite Your Life, 14 Things That Happen When You Pray. By Frankie Mazapika. Frankie, thank you so much. This has been fun. Yeah, Micah. this is it's awesome. It's always fun hanging out <laughs> with you guys, but this has been fun. What if people um, want to find you personally? I know you have sermon series online and other resources. Where can they find you? Well, if you go to Instagram mm-hmm. or YouTube or go to um, my website, mm-hmm. then you can find out more. You can follow you know, in fact, it's interesting because on the YouTube channel, we got a whole bunch of testimonies of people who have been physically healed. Amen. So that's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a fun. lot of fun. But to follow me on Instagram, uh, it's pretty easy. You just type in my name. And so hopefully you guys will put my name in the <laughs> description <laughs> of this podcast. Spelled because, like it sounds. Right. It's spelled like it sounds. Mazapika. We'll put it in the show notes as well. There you, know. you go. There yeah. you go. And so, yeah, you can find me on all those platforms. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you for your time. We loved having you. And as always, You are welcome anytime on the show. It's so much fun. Thank you for having me. You betcha. Thank you guys for listening. You can like, subscribe, and share with your friends if this podcast was impactful at all to you. You can also find us wherever podcasts are hosted. Please um, check out some of our other links, and we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us today for this episode. If you were inspired by this content today, please share, rate, and leave a review. Also, please consider making a donation at elijahrising.org donate. Your support helps us continue the vital mission to combat sex trafficking. Until next time.